Yeah, I know what you're thinking when you're watching these Math Counts minis back at home. You're thinking, I could do better than that. Hey, you think this is easy. You just point the camera, turn it on, start running your mouth, and great stuff comes out. Well, here's your chance to prove it. It's the real math challenge from Math Counts. That's R-E-E-L math.org. It's a competition where you get to make videos out of Math Counts problems, just like I do. And the winners get all expenses paid trips to nationals in Orlando, where you get to meet me. And you get to go to Disney World. So come check it out. Real Math Challenge. Start making videos and you'll see how hard this is. All right, let's get to the math. There's our first problem. Word problem. I thought we took care of all the word problems last time. All right, here we go. Three consecutive positive integers. We want to find the positive difference between the square of the middle integer and the product of the first and the last. We can get a handle on it with a few examples. Start with one, two, and three. Square of the middle, 2 squared is 4. Product of the first and last, it's 1 times 3. That's 3. These are 1 apart. Let's try another example. 3, 4, and 5. Square of the middle one, 4 squared is 16. Product of the first and the last, 3 times 5 is 15. These are 1 apart as well. Now I know what you're going to do in the contest. You're going to write 1 and move on, but not me, I don't trust it. You know, I don't know that this is going to work for any three consecutive integers. We know what to use here. We had a word problem. We're going to break out a variable. Now, which one of these numbers, first, second, or third, are we going to put the variable on? Now, when I have a problem with equally spaced integers, like we have here, if there's an odd number of integers, I like to take that variable and put it on the middle number. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to assign the variable to the middle number. We're going to call that x. So the first number is x minus 1. The last number is x plus 1. And of course, the square of the middle integer, that's easy. That's just x squared. But now I have to multiply the first and the last. x minus 1 times x plus 1. I'm going to break out the distributive property here to multiply this out. We've got the x minus 1 times the x. x minus 1 times the x plus the x minus 1 times the 1. And now I'll use the distributive property a couple more times to multiply each of these out. x times x is x squared. Minus 1 times x is minus x. And over here, x times 1, that's x. Minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. And sure enough, these two middle terms cancel each other out. Minus x plus x, they're both gone. And we're left with x squared minus 1. And we see that the square of the middle integer is always one more than the product of the first and the last. And that knocks off this problem. But it also shows you one of my favorite algebra tricks right here. We got the difference of x and 1 times the sum of x and 1. Multiply those out and we get the difference of the squares of x and 1. x squared minus 1 here. Now there's nothing special about x and 1. I can do this with any two numbers. Check this out. If we start with a minus b times a plus b. Difference of two numbers times the sum of those two numbers. And we're going to use the distributive property just like we did before. We're going to multiply this out. We get a minus b times a plus a minus b times b. And we'll use the distributive property a couple more times. Multiply each of these out. a times a is a squared minus b times a. That gives us a minus ab plus a times b. We get another ab. And we have minus b times b, that's minus b squared. And sure enough, these middle two terms cancel out again, and we're left with a squared minus b squared. So we multiply the difference of two numbers times the sum of those two numbers, and we get the difference of the squares of those two numbers. This is also very powerful moving in the other direction. If we have the difference of two squares, we can factor that as a difference times the sum. Let's check out a couple more problems and see See if this comes up anywhere else. So we're here we're looking for the product of all integer values of x, for which the absolute value of x squared minus 9 is a prime number. Now one way you might start with this is to start throwing in values of x. Throw in 0, 0 squared minus 9, negative 9, absolute value of that is 9, 9 is not prime. Stick in 1, 1 squared, 1, minus 9, negative 8, absolute value is 8, 8, not prime. Stick in 2, <sighs> this is ridiculous. Not only will that take forever, but how do you know when you found them all? How do you know when to stop? We have to do something smarter. And we see that this is a difference of squares. 
we see that we can write this. This is just x squared minus 3 squared. So I can factor this using that difference of squares thing we were just talking about. This is x minus 3 times x plus 3. Now why would we want to write it like this? Well, prime numbers, those are all about products. Right? If you have two numbers that you're multiplying and the result is prime, well, one of these two numbers has to be 1 or negative 1. And 6, 6 is 2 times 3. The two numbers we're multiplying, neither one of them is 1 or negative 1. 6 is composite. 5, you can't come up with two numbers that multiply to give you 5 unless one of them is 1 or negative 1. All right, you get two integers that multiply to 5. One of them has to be 1 or negative 1, and that's because 5 is prime. So if we want this to be prime, we need x minus 3 or x plus 3. We need one of these to be either 1 or negative 1. Otherwise, this product, when we take the absolute value, not going to be prime. So now let's list out the possible values of x that we can put in here to make one of these factors, either 1 or negative 1. We'll look at this one first. If we put in 2 or we put in 4, if we put in 2, this will be negative 1. If we put in 4, it will be positive 1. And then this factor over here, we need x plus 3 to be either 1 or negative 1. If we put in negative 2 or negative 4. If we put in negative 2, we get 1. If we put in negative 4, we'll get negative 1. Any other value of x we put in here, both of these factors are going to be something other than 1 or negative 1. The product, not going to be prime. Here are the possible values of x. We still have to text, test them. We can stick it up in here. 2 squared minus 9, that's negative 5. So we get 5 when we take the absolute value. We take the 4 and we put it in. 4 squared is 16 minus 9. That gives us 7. Negative 2, well, we've basically already done that. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 9. It's negative 5. Take the absolute value, you get 5. And negative 4, you stick that in there, you get 16 minus 9 is 7. All of these come out to be prime. All four of these values of x work. Give us a prime number. So now we just read the problem at the end. What is the product of the values of x? 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 2 times negative 4 is also 8. We multiply those two 8s. We've got 64, and we're ready to move on to the final problem. Oh, and I don't even have a calculator. How am I going to do this without a calculator? Well, without a calculator, I'm going to have to be smart, or as I like to think about it, without a calculator, I get to be smart. But how am I going to be smart with this? I mean, these these large numbers are kind of scaring me, making me a little nervous. Now, when, when I see things that make me nervous and, and scary, I, I want them to go away. And one way I make these big numbers go away is I can take a variable and stick it in for one of the big numbers. So I take a big number and replace it with a itty bitty variable, and then I'm calmer. And it's better when I'm calm. So I want to take a variable and stick it in for one of these numbers. Now, which one should I choose? Let's take a closer look. These two are the same. This one's 23 less than that. And this one's 23 more than that. So these numbers, they're equally spaced. And I once heard this really smart guy say that if I've got three equally spaced numbers and I'm going to put a variable in, it's, I have to put it in for the middle number. Really, really smart guy. Who, who was that? Oh, yeah, that was me two problems ago. All right, so we're going to take a variable and put it in for the middle number. That's the middle number. This one right here, 552. Uh, I can't even say it. But... I can stick a variable in for it. Here we go. We're going to stick in n for number. And we got n times n minus this product here. This is n minus 23. And that one's n plus 23. And n times n, that's just n squared. And then I'm subtracting. Hey, this is just the difference of two numbers times the sum of those same two numbers. We know what happens here. This just comes out to the difference of the squares of those numbers. n squared minus 23 squared. Now we have n squared minus, we subtract this, this will give us minus n squared plus 23 squared, because minus a minus, that gives us a plus. These n squareds cancel, and we're just left with 23 squared. And hey, I can break out the distributive property, because you know, when you get up to my age, you have trouble remembering things like this. So I'm just going to multiply this out. This is 23 times 20 plus 3. 23 times 20. That is, let's see, that's 460. And 23 times 3, that's 69. 
460 plus 69, that is 529. And if you think you can do better than this, you know where to go, realmath.org.